Welcome to Fight News Now. I am John Ramdean, and over the next half hour, we'll be getting you up to date with the UFC as they hold two cards this weekend. We'll start with a look at UFC Fight Night, McDonald versus Safadine from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Then we'll break down Nelson versus Story from Stockholm, Sweden. Plus, we'll hear comments from Conor McGregor, Uriah Faber, and Dominic Cruz. As always, Robin Black will join me for three rounds, and the shift brings you the latest from the silver screen. But up first are this week's newsmakers. UFC Fight Night 54 is the only remaining Canadian card on the UFC schedule for 2014, and Fight Network will be covering the entire event from the weigh-ins until the post-fight presser. And with that, we'll send things over to John Pollock, who's standing by in Halifax. Thanks, John, and we're just outside of the Scotiabank Centre where it will all go down on Saturday night as the UFC presents their very first card from the city of Halifax. There's a lot of interesting stories going into Saturday night, starting at the top where Rory McDonald will take on Tarek Safadine in a five-round welterweight contest. Safadine was the final Strike Force welterweight champion when that promotion folded in January of 2013 and then came over to the UFC but was hit by the injury bug. Since that January fight in 2013 has only fought once inside of the the octagon but he can turn all of his fortunes around by knocking off who many think is the top contender now at 170 pounds in Rory McDonald so a huge opportunity for Safadine then from a local standpoint Chris Kalidas on only five days notice trains out of Al Halifax and he will step in to replace an injured Luis Gaudino to take on Patty Houlihan on Saturday night lots of anticipation for this huge opportunity for Chris Kalidas those are just two of the stories we're going to be following all week long leading into UFC Fight Night Saturday night in Halifax. Now back to you, John. The main event of UFC Fight Night 54 features a welterweight class between the highly touted TriStar product Rory McDonald and former Strike Force welterweight champion Tarek Safadine. We now take a closer look at this 170 pound tilt. <laughs> That win on the final Strike Force card remains the most significant of Tarek Safadine's career and made him the last welterweight champion in promotional history. After injuries sidelined Safadine for almost a year, he would finally make his UFC debut in Singapore against late injury replacement Yun Gyu Lim. Sponge would use the same tools that made him Strike Force champion to destroy the legs of Lim. Devastating leg kick for Tarek Safadine. After five rounds of punishment, Safadine would walk away with the unanimous decision, setting him up for a big step up in competition. Rory McDonald has been carrying around the title of future UFC champion for almost as long as he's been with the promotion. For years, he was asked whether he would face his mentor and training partner, George St. Pierre. Me and George are not going to fight. It's, um, you know, it's me and him are friends and we're, and we're very close training partners. It, uh, it's just not going to happen. At UFC 167, he dropped a tough split decision to Robbie Lawler, costing him a shot at Big Rig for the title. However, in his last two performances, he has finally looked like the champion everyone has said he will be. Fighting the number nine welterweight on home soil, Aries will need to make a major statement if he wants the next title shot. I respect uh, UFC's decision and whatever they plan to do, but they should know that I'm ready. And one day, very soon, the bell will be mine. This weekend in Halifax, the opening fight on the main card is a bantamweight bout between submission ace Mitch Gagnon and promotional newcomer Roman Salazar, who steps in on short notice to replace Rob Font. Salazar is a relative unknown with a 9-1 record and becomes Gagnon's third opponent change leading up to Saturday night's fights. The UFC returns to Stockholm, Sweden for the third time in the promotion's history, and the undefeated Gunnar Nelson steps into the main event as he puts his winning streak on the line against ultra-tough southpaw Ricky Story. Nelson is coming off back-to-back -back performance of the night bonuses, while Story earned a second-round submission victory over Leo Mafra. Here's a closer look at this welterweight headliner. When Gunnar Nelson and Rick Story meet in Stockholm on Saturday, we'll see two fighters at very different places in their careers. Horror made his promotional debut way back at UFC 99 and has a six-fight win streak under his belt that includes wins over Thiago Alves as well as current UFC champion Johnny Hendricks. 
Unfortunately, since that streak, Story has been unable to string together two wins. In his last outing, after settling in with his new fight team at the MMA lab, Story returned to his roots, showing off excellent wrestling on his way to a second round submission finish. Rick Story needed a finish and he gets it here tonight against Leonardo Mafra. It is that kind of performance that should put the horror in the top 10. However, his inconsistency has stalled his career at the gatekeeper level. So now he's been set up to face one of the hottest prospects at 170 pounds. Gunnar Nelson has long been known for his wizardry of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and lived up to the hype in his UFC debut with a submission win in the first round. After spending the majority of 2013 on the sidelines, the Icelander returned with a vengeance, scoring two submission finishes, including a beautiful rear naked choke over Zach Cummings in Ireland. Since joining the UFC, Nelson has been given the slow build. However, Rick's story is a definite step up in competition and will tell a lot about whether Gunny has what it takes to become a champion. Can Story stop the prospect and make a statement of his own? Or will Nelson quell the horror and vault himself into the top 10? The always exciting Conor McGregor certainly lived up to the hype this past weekend, putting an exclamation point on his performance with a first round TKO over top 10 featherweight Dustin Poirier. As the notorious one rapidly climbs the ranks, he was quick to fire off his thoughts on how he would fare against Chad Mendez and champion Jose Aldo. I believe I'll dismantle both of them. Chad's a five foot six overblown. You know, he's a, he, he should be a 135er, but he's gone past that limit now. Now he's just a little small bodybuilder that's stuck in the 145 division. He gets tired quick. He's five foot six, five foot five, 65 inch reach. I have an eight inch reach advantage on him. I'll tower over him. So I would maul Chad. Um, Jose, again, I feel he's in that pattern of deterioration. So again, another, another easy win. I, I, it seems to be, the division seems to be full of rookies and has-beens. So I'm just sitting here enjoying myself, collecting these checks on my way, eliminating each one. This week's Tweet of the Week comes to us courtesy of John Alessio, who says, wow, Conor McGregor already making 75,075 per fight seems messed up to me, considering all the other vets in the UFC making way less. After three years of inactivity, Dominic Cruz returned to the octagon in top form, dispatching Takeya Mizugaki by knockout in the first round and earning himself a performance of the night bonus. UFC President Dana White confirmed that Cruz will be next in line for a crack at TJ Dillashaw's title. And here's what Cruz had to say about the matchup. Nothing but respect for, for everybody in the division, but I never really lost my title. Um, I got hurt and I haven't been sitting around eating getting fat, doing nothing. I've been working and I've, I've been analyzing fights, breaking them down, learning about everybody in the division, everybody's style, watching people take bits and pieces of the things that I talk about and make it their, their own. And I'm watching the sport evolve and I'm watching people grow and get better. And I'm with them. I haven't just been sitting around. I'm ready to go out there and have that belt. I never lost it. I shouldn't have gone in anybody else's hands, but I was hurt, it's my own doing. So I just wanna go prove that I'm still there. Jorge Masvidal secured his third straight win under the UFC banner with a dominating performance over the 21-6 James Krause. Following the bout, Masvidal made it clear that he wants to step up in competition and is looking for his next opponent to be a top five lightweight. I'm not just one of the top five guys. I just want to fight the best guys out there possible, you know. That's all I want to do is whoever's the biggest, baddest dude out there, give him to me. Wherever it is, you know, I, I really don't think that anybody in the top 10 or top five is, is a guy that I haven't fought or, or something that I haven't seen. It's just a number by their name, you know? Ben Henderson, I know he wants to do one more fight before he moves up. I, I'd love to get Ben Henderson or whoever's in the top five and, and is available, I'd love to fight them, you know? That's what I want. The hunt for a new striking coach at Team Alpha Male has come to an end as it was recently announced that the hitman Martin Campman will be filling the role. We caught up with Team Alpha Male founder Uriah Faber who shared his thoughts on the Danish striker. Campman, I was really impressed with what he brought to the table, and he did a great job when he was out here. We just have to make sure that all the guys are on board. Dwayne's still been in and out of the gym as well. You know, we've created a great program here, and the guys, you know, we really created a family setting, a competitive family setting. And we've got a whole group of young guys that are up and coming, so that's motivating for me. You got to bring your A game every day, or else you get beat up. So, uh, what better motivation than uh, protecting yourself? It was announced that the World Series of Fighting plans to hold pay-per-view events in 2015. 
President Ray Seffo has stated that they will share 50% of the net revenue from its pay-per-view telecast with their fighters. Recent signee Mike Malad, who debuts for the promotion on October 11th, shared his thoughts on the money-making opportunity. I'm really not going to change my fighting style at all. I'm not going to go out there and rush it. Um, I've, I've, I, I never am aggressively looking for the finish. I, I tend to just go in there and fight my fight, and uh, so far I've found the finishes uh, quickly. It's just, I think, goes with my style and my aggression. Um, but uh, I think if I just continue the way I'm going, that I will get those, those moving up on the pay-per-view as far as World Series of Fighting. But like you mentioned, they're splitting the pay-per-view revenues with the fighters. That's something that is really exciting for me. I've, I've been thinking lately, well, you know, get this win and then hopefully UFC. When I read that, I thought, do I want to go to the UFC right now or do I want to stick with World Series of Fighting where there's these immediate uh, rewards? Um, if, if they're making money on the pay-per-views and they're splitting it with the fighters, that's, that's a huge incentive for me to stay with World Series of Fighting. Those are your newsmakers for this week. Be sure to stick around because after the break, Robin Black joins me on three rounds to discuss the show in Halifax.